Hello, this is Janet Gallen welcoming you to Love Letters Live. And today's guest is, I'm happy to say, one of my dear, dear friends. He Mickey, I'm not going to make you blush here, am I? No. Started out as my uh, teacher at Apple for their one-to-one -one program. And he is the most wonderful teacher. Wonderful. He could get a fire hydrant to use a computer. <laughs> so talented at this. And I'm happy to say that our, this relationship, once Apple ended this feature, that we became good friends. I love him dearly. Okay. My guest is Mickey Smith, here to tell quite a story. Mickey, I'm going to go to you to say hello, and you want to just dive in and tell this remarkable story. Yes, um, and, and thank you for that, that lovely um, introduction, Janet. I, I super appreciate and admire you, and um, there's so many times I've seen you go through some, some challenging situations with your head held high and always with grace and poise and um, anytime that I'm, I'm struck with a difficult situation, um, I, I call your energy to kind of, okay, how can I, how can I do this Janet style with, with oh, grace and thank voice. you, sweetheart. It looks like we're so good for each other. Yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. yes. And we have a lot of stories to share actually, but we're just going to focus on one today. You go. Yes. So, um, what, uh, what we talked about is doing a follow-up story. Um, so the last love letters live live. Um, that I had done. And that was when we were radio, so we didn't get to see your face talking about it. Exactly, would you, yes. Would you recap that incident and say what you did? Yes, I so I believe that was, um, I was trying to think six years ago. Uh, I believe it was six years ago. Um, and my bicycle was was stolen. And um, but you, had, you had <laughs> bought a new bicycle. I, yes. Let's get I all the delicious me. details. And and bicycle riding was huge to you. Yes. Yeah. That's how I got around. That's my that was my mode of transportation. Uh, my my social life. Also, how I gave back to community was through AIDS life cycle. Um, how I continue to give back um, is through AIDS life cycle and on my bicycle. And um, at that point, we um, in in the love letters live um, conversation that we had had, we'd come up with a, really a mind map of all the positive things that came out of. Oh well, can, can we get to that a little more slowly? Because there are a couple of you had bought a new, very expensive titanium bike. Is that correct? Yes, it was a, a, a Masi, uh, same brand that I have now. <laughs> um, so it, Italian, um, a gorgeous, gorgeous bicycle. And what was the um, detail that happened of its being stolen? I mean, that was the, the big issue here. Yes, um, it was stolen. It was um, it was actually locked up with with two um, really strong U locks, um, and I had I had left it outside, and and someone had had stolen it. Um, so they and, have they have cutters that can go through that. Yeah, yeah. You know, in in hindsight, I would never. Uh, I mean, I, I have a couple places where I leave my bike now, like outside for a few minutes. But it's in in general, I, I wouldn't recommend. No matter how strong you think your bicycle uh, lock is, uh, someone's will is always stronger. <laughs> and, and how did you feel when you saw that bicycle was gone? Oh my gosh, uh, my my heart totally, um, completely sunk. And um, you know, I I think it was also really looking forward to um, to the next AIDS life cycle and how was I going to make this happen? How was I going to get around? Even now, um, you know, five, six years later, when my bike is, um, I have to get it for a tune-up, I, I, I feel a little like lost. <laughs> like how do I, you know, that when it's my mode of transportation, you know, it, imagine not having a, a car um, for a lot of people. Um, and then suddenly, how do, how do I get around? How do I live my oh, life? Yeah, of course. Let yeah. me ask you something. So af after you saw this bicycle was gone in your world and your heart kind of crashed, mm. you, a friend of yours, was it, um, who was a swimmer, would you please tell the details of? Yes. And, and then from there, just because, you know, I have so much I, I want to share this move forward. Can I um, also kind of also say how that progressed since our last conversation? And maybe we could uh, share, share that link to our last conversation. Well, I just want to I just want people who are seeing this for the first time to know what you did instead of bicycle riding. Yes. So then I, um, I started uh, swimming. 
um, and, and started running again and actually got my running down. Um, but, but I think most importantly is that I started swimming um, and which brought my sister and I closer, um, Lizzie Smith, who's also a guest with you. Um, and uh, and so Lizzie Smith. Yes. And your dad is a swimming coach for her. I mean, it brought your whole family. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah. So we, um, yeah, so yeah, it, a good it, memory it, of your life. Mm, yeah. So yeah, my dad and I got talking about, um, different swim techniques and which also, um, brought me to now one of my best friends, um, Bill Smith. Um, uh, yeah, and we're, we're still extremely close friends. We usually swim, uh, three times a week or so until, until the pools were, were closed due to a pandemic and everything. But, um, yeah, it completely changed my my physical activity and and got me into swimming. Connected me with new friends, um, and uh, yeah, the, yeah, there's there's a, a lot there, and it continues to uh, be a big part of my life, and will be again once pools are back open. Now, so what we learned from this awful incident about your well, bicycle is that you got some really good never ask for them benefits. Mm. And you decided to do one of the most clever love letters I've ever heard of. Would you talk about the, please? Yes. So I, I did a, a mind map. Um, Is that I, like the same as a flow chart? Yes. Yeah. It was a flow chart, except for it goes in all, all different directions. Um, so one of, them, uh, one of the outcomes was, was swimming and getting started with swimming. Uh, another benefit was um yeah, getting closer to my family, um, getting a, I'd, I'd have to review, review the flow chart. I remember it was a lot, like my running times went down to uh, 42 minutes for a, a 10K, which is um, a really good. My times aren't like that now. <laughs> oh, so can we but, just describe it? Because I can picture that flow chart. In the middle was- Yeah, the bicycle so in the middle was my bicycle getting stolen. Um, and oof, I, it's been a number of years really since I, I looked at it, uh, definitely remember swimming and then running were other side benefits of it. Um, and I think I have a copy of it, Mickey. So if I can find yeah. it, I'm going to put it right on my website because it is such a work of art and a flow chart as a love letter. And who are you, who are you sending this love letter to? Um, to, to the bicycle thief. Yes. Yeah um yeah it was yeah it was it was to the to the bicycle thief and you know I think um yeah I, I think there's almost like a part two uh, to this okay, um, story you know, know. And, and you know I think that flowchart was a great great way of me learning to to see the positive uh -huh. in the circumstance and I think you know bringing us to our current situation um I, I think it taught me too to be a very skillful optimistic thinker you know, I don't know if um, you're familiar with the, the term toxic positivity. No, but it uh, sounds important. What is it? Uh, it's essentially, it's trying to look for the silver lining or trying to push oh. yourself or myself into this like positive state of mind um, before grieving the loss. Um, before? Yes. So you have like, so what, what, and one of the ways that's helped me um, navigate our current situation with the pandemic and, you know, just the, the like really daily mood swings of, oh, okay, I can do this now. I love all of this time. And then the next day, oh, life is so hard. And, um, but one of the things that's helped me navigate this, I think, is actually the bicycle thief um, and learning how to have that optimistic mindset. And then also, uh, see that it, it's also super important that we honor the fact that um, maybe it is a hard time, you know, and to, to grieve that loss and, um, and to, you know, feel those feelings and yeah. then, and then move forward with the optimism. And I, I, I feel like I've seen you model that so beautifully as well, um, Janet. Where, so where do you go from here now? You would talk, when we talked, you said, you know, you wanted to do another letter, another love letter. Yes. Um, so, and I think it oh, would be to um, the that skillful optimism, um, and and talking about um, so AIDS life cycle and how I've moved that forward. Um, so typically we'd had um, and actually just the whole political climate that we're in right now. Um, aside, in addition to uh, the pandemic, is also looking for. Um, that skillful optimism of acknowledging the, yeah. the struggles and the hard times and, you know, grieving that. Um, and then also 
um, of finding like, okay, that, that optimism for the future, how do we move forward? Um, so and, you're, you're saying, if I understand this correctly, mm -hmm. that this, what you did with the bicycle thief, you yes. can, of course you can, take to any area of your life, stick the trouble right in the middle of that page and then see what it has allowed you to do. And I, I happen to know that mm. embedded in every experience, horrible experience, good ones, of course, but even bad ones, embedded are the seeds of a love letter to someone. Mm. And yes. like, who would you, you talk about AIDS life cycle, who would you, I mean, I don't want to, I don't want to try to influence because, you know, I don't like to be love letter police, but who would your next one be to and based on what? Mm. And where are you going to send it? So I, I was actually thinking almost the, um, to the bicycle thief again, um, you know, and like a, in a follow-up and, you know, I, I think some of it, it in that love letter um, would also be a, um, a, a, another reconciliation of sorts in like recognizing that I was trying to analyze maybe the hard times that he was going through and that's not my place, you know? Uh -huh. um, I think it's, a, it's important to have empathy, but it's more, I think for, for me and for my mental capacity and energy um, to say, you know, he, he, the, the bicycle, they, they did this, you know, this, this happened and this had this negative impact on me. I don't, I don't need to um, speculate the circumstances um, of of which that person you know is coming from, or you know maybe trying to. Um, I think at the time I was uh, maybe trying to paint a picture of uh, you know how how hard their life was, or but it's all fictional thinking, right? Yeah. But I, I want to say just to be clear here, mm. like yes. people say now, just to be clear, yes, the negative impact was rather momentary in the big picture. Right. And positive impact just went on and on. So what would you yes. what would you like to say? Dear bicycle thief, what? Um, dear bicycle thief, um, thank you so much for um for stealing my bicycle. You know, I um I do hope that it, it that it brought you something beautiful in your life. Um and you know, whatever whatever you're longing for, I hope that you found that. Um and I would also say, you know, at, at this point, there's, um, I, I feel like I've grieved, I've healed um, and, and grown stronger to, to see, just as, as you're referring to, Janet, seeing that um, there was a moment in time and there was a choice at that point in time of, um, I could either use this as, as a seed of, of hatred, of, um, of bad will, or I could see make that choice to say, okay, actually, I'm going to see and track all of the positive things um, that can come out of this. So I have a question and, about that in terms of letter yeah. writing, and I have been fortunate enough to have received a couple of beautiful letters from you myself, and mm. I know what a good letter writer you are, and I know what a clear thinker you are, and what a positive person you are. Does it occur to you to write this letter to the bicycle thief and mentioning? And I uh, mentioned, and then doing it, sending a copy saying, I'm, you know, I'm writing to you, but I'm going to send a copy of this to my sister and my father and the people at Life Cycle and mm. one to yourself. Yes. And, you know, as long as you're doing this kind of like almost, well, this is only the second, but you might end up doing this as kind of a series of your own life progression stemming from that moment where your heart just yeah. crunched. And you'll have a collection of, you'll have something, a collection of something really valuable in terms of human growth by yeah. the time you receive all these letters to yourself. I don't know, what do you see doing with this? I, so one of the things that I see going with this is uh, actually, you know, taking maybe maybe a step further and um, feeling like you know this this pandemic. I feel like it, it's kind of robbed us of yes. of so many experiences. One of them being AIDS life cycle um, for for thousands of people, uh, three thousand or so usually are are going um, either two thousand going down the down the state of California from San Francisco to LA, raising thousands of dollars, um, and then there's another thousand or so volunteers. Um, who are, you know, the pandemic has essentially robbed them of, of this experience. Um, so maybe, maybe a, a good lesson might be the, um, a love letter um, to send out to them um, 
to to the um, to the uh, the bicycle thief, and um, and really drawing on. You know, this as an example of the pandemic can also be an example of so many beautiful things coming well, out okay, of this could you, horrible could you, incident. Could you say some of those out loud. Yes, yeah, so, I think we've um, all learned a lot about what we really need in life, and mm, then go. Yes. So one of the um, so with AIDS life cycle, I'd say the biggest um, benefit that's come out of that is that um, well the ride being canceled, which which is still hard for many of us to uh, to accept. Um, but we've also come up with a new a new program um, called uh, Together Ride. Um, Together Ride or yeah, so that's and that's my little. Um, <laughs> oh, okay. I didn't yeah, my that. little plug here. So definitely go check out uh, TogetherRide.org uh, because that. Um, I, for me, that is the silver lining out of out of AIDS life cycle, uh, because now because we've been robbed of AIDS life cycle, which spoke to um, you know a lot of uh, athletically endurance inclined folks. Um, now anyone um, oh. can have this opportunity. How interesting. Okay, so you don't need to be able to ride a bicycle to take part. Exactly. Yeah. You need to take two weeks off from work. Exactly. How, yeah. How would I, for example, take part in this? Um, I don't well, have a bicycle anymore. Well, so um, if, if you're in, into walking, um, that could be one. You could um, just lock those miles that you're walking. So even if you're just doing like a, a few blocks uh, at a time, um, even just a little bit and then adding those up until they're miles. Um, we also, my mom actually is joining, which is super exciting. Um, and so she uh, does Qigong actually. So we have like a conversion rate of um, if you're doing qigong for a, I don't know, I don't know what I don't know what that is. What is qigong? Oh, qigong is like a. It's almost it's almost like a a more meditative version of yoga where you're doing like different different poses and moving like energy around. Okay. Um, yeah, and staying physically active, but it's it's allowing us to like find a way to engage all how, these. How, new do you, how do you how do you translate the walk that your mother's taking mm. um, into donations for life cycle um so essentially just this the same way of um that we did before where before the storyline was oh i'm i'm going to do um this bike ride uh, um, from san francisco to la 547 miles say it again you got sponsors who would pay a certain amount per mile or whatever it was yes or just sharing this inspirational story of so for my mom for example maybe right now she's only doing qigong twice a week and um, she wants to to push herself and then also share um push herself kind of in in honor of um of those impacted the 1.2 million people um, with hiv aids in the united states today and say, um, in, in honor of these people, I want to push myself to do three to, to five days uh, Qigong. I see. So, any, so, but then you could, you could send a donation in. Exactly. Life cycle with a little note saying, you know, I'm, I'm yes. doing this because, you know, I know I can't ride and I want to send this donation in honor of all those yes. who, okay. All right. That's yeah. good to know. Yeah. Yeah, and and I think it's it's bringing a lot of people together in a in a di in a different way, you know. That um, where my mom signing up for AIDS life cycle, that did it. I mean, she could still do that, you know. I hope she does. Um, <laughs> and maybe this is a great entry point for her, you know, uh -huh. um, and for lots of people uh, to just get active and then also to stay connected. I know. Um, I've also my my neighbor uh, Anne. She also rides a stationary bike, and so I reached out to her about, about joining my team. You know, and it's it's creating this whole sense of of community um, that wasn't there before. That is wonderful. Yes, oh, I'm and we're doing monthly programs too, um, so people can learn more about the um, about the communities who are unjustly impacted by HIV/AIDS, um, and similarly COVID. Um, and talking about what, what does health justice look like? Um, what does, um, why, why are some people more susceptible to, to dying of these different diseases? And you know, you're making another good point really that in, we can't lose sight of the fact that we, we can't have COVID totally overshadow the needs of people who are living with AIDS or living, you know, HIV positive, right. because that's yeah. still a need that's going on. Oh, yes. thank you for doing this with me. I was so curious what you were going to do with the second letter when you said you wanted to write one. 
Yeah. Level. I hope it people is. say it again. I said, I hope you do it, but I know you will. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes. You're not a man yeah. who talks idly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's, it's, it's good to get a move on, right? With the bicycle. <laughs> oh, thank you, honey, for doing this. I'm so glad to be seeing you here. And yes. Yet, um, we'll talk again soon. If you have anything interesting to say, you know, my view is you send a love letter and you don't get to expect something in return. Well, yeah, that's that's the whole thing. Never, never expectations. That's it's right. just disappointment. It's not, but also a love letter is a gift to whoever exactly. gets one and that's your part's done yeah and having said that so often oh yeah you get uh responses that you never even dreamed of and you see how far mm. the goodness of that letter reaches yes oh like the uh actually i loved the the love letter i got back from you uh, that, that 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 warmed my heart something fierce and brought a tear to my eye oh um, yeah so yeah we so do. It is, and that's become a, a huge practice after our first interview is really writing. I think in, in actually in our interview, I said I hadn't written on paper in so long. I don't remember. Now I always, I'm always writing on paper. You do. It's a wonderful thing, isn't it? Yes. It's a wonderful yes, it little is. satisfactory habit. Yes. Yeah. Especially and, and, sending love letters. I, also, that I'm, has changed my life. But also, you know, when you drop a note to somebody, it mm. is so much easier than reaching them on the phone. Yes. Because two things, well, a lot of things, but first of all, you get their answering machine more often than not. And you mm -hmm. can spill out your heart, you know, onto an answering machine, but you don't really know if it gets where it's going. And the other thing is a phone call is usually an interruption. A oh, love yes. letter never is. Mm. Doesn't get you out of the shower or, you know, away from a movie you're watching. Yes. And it's just the whole thing is so leisurely and luxurious. I'm so glad you do it. Yeah. All right, darling. Well, I will I will talk to you later. And again, yeah. I just thank you for doing this with me. I love hearing from you. I love your ideas. And most important, I love you. Uh, I love you too, Janet. Thank you Bye, so sweetie. much. Bye. Bye.